not enough. There are levels of innovation. Just wanted us to understand. You know, we should have to make it like paper dresses. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> They were supposed to sell for dollar twenty-five for one. Never made it. Right. For all kind of different reasons. So you can invent, as I said, but not necessarily innovate. The picture phone, right? Uh, people are showing off with selling pictures on the cell phone and so on. Nineteen sixty, before I was born. Right. That was there, but just didn't make it because technology wasn't ready for it. So I want to talk very quickly now about this wealth generation mechanism. I was going to read this stuff, but I think the lecture will take you if I do it. Prof. King and I sat down some years ago and came up with this concept of levels of activity that you would see in a, in a developed nation. And these levels are indicated here. We chose a man pyramid to show it, just to indicate the relative size of the population that are required to, to, to operate at the greatest level. So at the very bottom, we have something that everybody does. You can show you well enough. Commercial activity, you buy and sell. Production and services is the next level up. Again, that's kind of like buying and selling people, buy and sell services. But we also produce, we produce oil, but not much of it, not much of the technology we used to produce oil was developed here. But it's small, I mean, you could understand that, but I think still for our science and our history, the first oil mill ever in the world was driven to Jacobo. That was all. <laughs> First one you ever right here. Okay, so more than a hundred years of experience, all right. And I, I think that yes, we've done fairly well, um, but I thought we needed to do more. I think we both think that we really need to do more to be innovating on those on, on the, um, in terms of something that brings us income. Now the higher high level, you have product development. That is where you have an idea and you have created and developed this product because you're looking at marketing it at some point in time. Higher up. Product and process creation. Um, well, I'll leave it as creation. So you're actually bringing things out from your head into reality. And about that is your cutting edge scientific inquiry. You find out new things about the logic of the How does this work in the, in the, in the metropolis? Well, knowledge is created at every single level of this pyramid. Cutting edge scientific inquiry is shown as the main knowledge driver here. So that knowledge comes down in the thesis level. Hey guys, I found a way to, to we think we found a way to beam you from here to the US. Right? So two seconds a day. I know, I'm told it's a reality in 20 years. Right? Don't bother that long. But somebody has to take that and prepare for the market. The scientists are not going to do that. Somebody has to make it market, marketable. So you have to clean the process up. Right? That's your creation process. And you develop it, which is you're doing all the very, very tiny things that we may never define. I mean, there are a lot of things that challenge us with this that we never even expected. And um, then you get into the regular realm of production services, commercial activity, knowledge ready for sale, right? Or for transporting people. So knowledge comes down from that level. And knowledge is created at each level as well. But let's, let's keep it simple. And on the other side, big question you always ask is you have to be generating these publications, you have to be creating things in you and find out more nature and writing about it, but who funds the research? I made mean, the point that the principal knows this, if I have 600 lectures on campus, do we have 600 different lines of research? Can the country afford it? Answer no. Right? So we have to concentrate, but then who pays for it? Well, in validations, it's a cycle. So the commercial activity, activity that markets your scientific inquiry up here, Ultimately, down in the market sector, down there. That's where you get the money to pay for your research. The current right now um, expects 0.01% of GDP on research. 0.01%. Yes. The US, something like 4%. So that is significant. Um, and the US, if you read any of the offers, read Obama's statements in the election. A lot about research and development, a lot about intellectual property development. He understands the cycle very, very, very well. We think that um, whereas in the past um, we could understand why governments have been trying to, to, to gain income, develop the economy in different ways, even to me, and I, I suspect the public case whether you're clutching at straws, trying. But we think if you understand this picture, then the fact we'll be on a better footing. So basically, it says there's a connection. In this pyramid of activities, 
continue the scientific inquiry, which is the guys in the lab, they don't want to see anybody else, and they're nerds, and yeah, you call them what you want, right? But they are cracking the code of Mother Nature, they're bringing that to you. Somebody has to translate it so that it could be then moved into the market. It has to be done. And through the cycle, that's what we need to learn. Now, as you get into that, you'll find that, yes, you have to spend more money. Research is very expensive. Only about 5% of the discoveries in the development will make it to the market. 5%. All right? So tell me about gambling. All right? And tell me about taking risks. That's what they are doing. But they know that you have to keep it up to get that 5%. Because that 5% of wins is going to compensate for the 95% that was lost. All right? So, a lot of investment. Innovation, by its very definition, goes up as you go up the pyramid. Because you're creating higher value products, if you like, at the top of the pyramid. And your risk, unfortunately, does go up as well. But then, no pain, no gain, right? Right. That's the developed nation. Let's just look at us. I propose that for country like China and yes, these are all important. But you see, product development, it doesn't occur that much. And I think my good is showing the feeling of there. Some of it occurs. Sachi and Sachi, right? Done some good work. Um, Chubby done some good work and so on. Market innovation largely. That's what we call market innovation. All right? Um, that does not occur to any great extent compared to the developed nations. But you see, product and process creation, it almost, I mean, that's like. 0.0001% of activity taking place there. We have a disconnected pyramid, which is disjoint. We do have continuous scientific inquiry, where that occur? Right here. We do have production and services, oil sector, energy sector. We do have commercial activity. That's all people sell. They're very important. And they, I mean, they're very happy doing that. But there's nothing in between. So, question. So this might be. So you, you know where I'm coming, right, principal? Right. So here's UV, right there. Okay. All right, let me, let me try something. Uh, see if it will work. Right? Okay. There's UV. Good. Good. Yeah. Right. There's UV at the very top. Right? Looking at esoteric research, for example. Right? Oh, I will get 10 papers out of this line. To publish a paper internationally, you have to sign away your copyright. Government of Trenton Bureau puts in X million dollars to you, they pay your salary, there's a research fund, right? They help you get extra funding if necessary, okay? And you do your research, everybody's glad. You got your results and you write it. It's exciting. And to get any wealth from it, you have to put it in the international. International journal of high review. That's how our assessment and promotions are awaited. And you sign away your copyright. So I have a friend at McDonald's that was 40 bucks my deal for years. I do not have a much already, right? I tell him when I was in my PhD, and he helped me um, with a problem I had at a, my car was stolen, and he helped me get back and all that. And I came to the car in Los Angeles. Right? And he never let me forget it. Right? So 10 years after he still calling for help on his papers. His job! was to score the journals and find any information that he could to help him manufacture the jet fighters and the planes that McDonald's numbers were making. That's his job. What did the authors get from that? Zero. Because it's not public domain going. So when in a third world country, sorry, in an unrelated country, you spend this money on research, cutting edge research in particular, if you could, very, very difficult stuff to do here, a big team to do it properly. All that money, all that all those resources going to that, it's not given away. In fact, it's worse than that. It goes out of your pyramid into somebody else's, the ones that are complete. Where's Coco? Citrus industry. Right? We have, I feel, you know, for every square mile here, forgive me English for this. That's all right. We have a lot of intellectual capability on this on these two ends. We school our kids, we give them scholarships, and then we send them away and they don't come back. Your best goes, what's left? <laughs> 